This is 2.11 group 2. There are nine points here that you need to know. The first is why they are regarded as S-block elements. Second is to explain the trends within the group limited to electronic configuration, atomic radius and first ionisation energy. Then to investigate and describe the reactions of the elements with oxygen, water and dilute acids. To describe the basic nature of the oxides and their reactions with water and dilute acids. To recall the use of magnesium oxide and indigestion remedies and calcium carbonate and toothpaste. State the trends in thermal stability of the carbonates and hydroxides and explain this with reference to the charges and the sizes of the cations. Recall the use of calcium carbonate to make calcium oxide, which is quick lime, calcium hydroxide, which is slate lime, and their use in producing cement and concrete. To recall the solubility trends of the sulfates and hydroxides and to demonstrate understanding of how solubility curves are drawn from experimental data. So the group two elements are the alkaline earth metals, and that's beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. They're found in group two of the periodic table, and they're a group of reactive metals. They're known as S-block elements. So an S-block element is one which has an atom with its highest energy or outer electron in an S subshell or orbital. They're not found in nature in their elemental states, but as compounds in minerals or rocks, such as barite here, which is a mineral containing barium. So the chemistry of group two elements is dominated by their ability to lose two electrons to form cations with a charge of plus two. The reactivity of the elements increases down the group as it becomes easier to lose two electrons as the group is descended. So group two elements react with oxygen, with water and with acids. Next, the trends within the group. So atomic radius increases down the group as there are more filled energy levels between the nucleus and the electrons in the highest occupied energy level. So the outer electrons are more shielded and further from the nucleus. This leads to an increase in the atomic radius down the group. For ionisation energy, it also decreases down the group. As the group is descended, the distance between the nucleus and the outer electrons increases. And there's an accompanying increase in shielding as the group is descended, as there are again more filled energy levels between the nucleus and the outer electrons. Therefore, less energy is required to remove an electron as the group is descended. Next, we consider the reaction with oxygen for the metals. So they burn an oxygen to form a simple metal oxide, such as magnesium here, plus oxygen gives us magnesium oxide. And magnesium, as you know, burns with a bright white flame to form a white solid. Calcium burns with a brick red flame, also to form a white solid. Strontium is a red flame and barium is a green flame. <clears throat> metal oxides then are bases that react with water to form alkaline solutions. So for example, calcium oxide and water gives us calcium hydroxide. And calcium hydroxide solution is better known as lime water. And group two metal oxides also react with acids in neutralization. So for example, magnesium oxide here is reacting with sulfuric acid to give magnesium sulfate and water. Now the metals reaction with water. Beryllium does not react with water. Magnesium only reacts very slightly if left for a prolonged period of time. Cal calcium, strontium and barium react with increasing vigour to give the corresponding metal hydroxide and hydrogen. So for example, calcium and water gives calcium hydroxide and hydrogen. Magnesium reacts with water and produces a few bubbles over a long period of time and the metal dulls. Calcium reacts with water and there is fizzing. The mixture warms up and the metal rises and falls and then disappears and a white solid is produced. You see here the calcium would be placed underneath an inverted funnel, submerged in water in a beaker and a test tube full of water is placed over the top, over the spout of the funnel and the test tube then will fill with hydrogen gas. So the white solid produced when calcium reacts with water is calcium hydroxide, which is only slightly soluble in water. 
the solubility of the hydroxides increases down the group. And solubility is the maximum mass of solute that can dissolve in 100 grams of solvent at a stated temperature. Now, magnesium, calcium, strontium and barium all react with steam to produce the corresponding metal oxide with hydrogen. Because remember they don't react with cold water. So here magnesium and water gives magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas. And you would achieve that by heating in two places on the test tube at the same time. You have damp mineral wool for the water and then the metal is placed next to it in the tube. Then we have a delivery tube, the gas travels down through the beehive, bubbles up through the water in a gas jar and is collected at the top of the gas jar here. Now the reaction with acid. So group 2 metals react even more vigorously with acids than with water forming the metal salt and hydrogen. So again reactivity increases down the group as the outer shell electrons are lost more readily. So when group 2 metals react with hydrochloric acid, the observations are that the metal disappears, there's fizzing and the mixture warms up. With sulfuric acid, the observations are the same, except for with calcium, where there is fizzing initially, but this stops due to the formation of insoluble calcium sulfate. And our example here is magnesium and sulfuric acid gives magnesium sulfate and hydrogen. And the sulfates decrease in solubility down the group. Thermal de decomposition is another reaction that you need to know about. So all of the group 2 carbonates undergo thermal decomposition, requiring higher temperatures as the group is descended. And you see that trend here. So beryllium carbonate uh, decomposes at 100 degrees, where barium carbonate doesn't decompose until 1360 degrees. So the increased thermal stability can be explained with reference to the cation. So as the group is descended, the cation increases in size and has less of a polarising effect on the carbonate ion. This makes it more difficult for the carbonate to be decomposed. The group 2 hydroxides also form the corresponding oxide by thermal decomposition. <coughs> they produce water in the reaction. So magnesium hydroxide will decompose to give magnesium oxide and water. And the trend can be explained in a similar manner for that of the group 2 carbonates. Finally, the uses. So calcium carbonate is used to make calcium oxide, which is quicklime, and it's also used in toothpaste. Not the quicklime, the calcium carbonate. Calcium hydroxide or slate lime is used to make cement and concrete. And it's made by thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate, followed by the reaction of quicklime with water. So thermal decomposition is shown first, CaCO3 gives CaO and CO2, and then the reaction of quicklime with water, calcium oxide, and water gives calcium hydroxide. And finally, magnesium oxide is, is a base which is used in indigestion remedies.